Call like for me camera. Mariah, because I'm sick of carrying this conversation right now. You know? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. All right, fine, fine, fine. You know what? You know what your line should be right now? What's that? Okay. Welcome back. No, no. Your line should be, call me Roger, because I'm done. That Bro, I just had the perfect transition. <laughs> Damn it. You fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta Dickhead. fuck it up with a fucked up joke, right? <laughs> you know what your line should be? Welcome back to the, to 2 the 2 a.m. podcast. podcast. Episode 82. Ah ha ha ha. Back in the stew. Here to talk about heart disease. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Starting off we on are a light con- subject. We are continuing <laughs> with our series on public health crises. Mm-hmm. Previously, we have covered such things like addiction. We have covered obesity, mm-hmm. and now today, Finally. we are covering heart, heart disease. disease. <laughs> which, which if you didn't know, I hope know, that pans from the left and right. That... <laughs> which, if you didn't know, is the number one killer in the United States. Did you know that? I do now. I didn't five seconds ago. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for making me smarter, Zayd. What was, else do you have to say about I thought heart it was car disease? accidents, but. No, okay, it's, so, it's heart disease. We yeah. actually we googled it. Okay, yeah. it's like we do research for these or something. Wow, you really took so a deep as dive always in. we rely on scientific studies. Mm-hmm. What was it? Plumetrics data. Uh, plumetric. Sorry, plum X metrics. Peer reviewed papers. Uh, we try to view if it's mentioned who the um who the donators are, who pays, who funds all of the scientific research mm. just to make sure that there's no nefarious activities happening, which we will discuss later. Mm-hmm. We will. And would you like to kick us off on our deep dive into Good, sir. heart disease? So, of course, we'll start the question off with the basic question, what is cardiovascular disease? <laughs> we'll, start, <laughs> we'll start off with the question of the question, which is that question. Yeah. What is cardiovascular <laughs> disease? So if you didn't know, it's a term that refers to several types of heart conditions. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a catch-all phrase for a variety of things that affect the heart structure mm-hmm. as well as the function. As mentioned before, uh, it's a leading cause of death in the U.S., causes one in four deaths, and it's responsible for a third of the deaths worldwide. So, as you can see, it's a very big fucking problem. So, when we say cardiovascular disease, we're really talking about a plethora of different types of diseases that can apply to your heart or your cardiovascular system. And would you like to mention a few of those just to kick us off a little Mm -hmm. bit, just to get the conversation rolling? Uh, So you have a stroke is included in them. And then there's a one of the most important ones is coronary artery disease, which you think of a classic heart attack. That would be the uh, the process that leads up to that. And basically, when when somebody has a heart attack, it's not like this slow. um, It's not a slow process. It takes decades to. Uh, build up and it is a slow process or it is a slow process my uh my apologies and it happens when people are around usually 40s in between their 60s i would assume Mm -hmm. but the reason why this is so important to me is because this is what my father passed from so that led me to researching you know got me curious researching all of this stuff and uh yeah from that point forward hopefully we can provide some value for you guys yeah absolutely um, do you guys know of anyone who's struggled with it or who's been through it? My I mean, father died from it. Yeah, yeah. Same here. Um, I mean, but smoking was just more common in my family, I guess, mm-hmm. or a uh, side of my family. Yeah. That was what did it for my grandpa. He just, just a crazy smoker. Apparently, yeah. And he was like, I'm never going to quit. Yeah. It's like, I went to world war two. I'm never giving up my six. <laughs> like, yeah. okay. Hey man, let him do it. Yeah. <laughs> fair enough. You know, you do you grandpa. I'm yeah. It's like, because the way they see it is like you fight with everyone in life, but the only thing that's by your side is a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. They really do be thinking like that. It's crazy. It's true though. Now, um, let's get into what are the causes mm-hmm. of cardiovascular disease. So we have smoking, which we mentioned already. Yep. We have high stress, which a lot of people don't think of, but when you are chronically stressed that lead directly leads to inflammation which in turn leads to a cascade of effects that impacts the heart Uh, you have excess sugar consumption which this country struggle struggles with a lot uh go down a little bit actually we can cover yeah some of the studies yeah sorry i'll keep going just a just a quick overview sedentary lifestyle is another Mm -hmm. high blood pressure and um 
Yeah, I'd say that's that's most of the main causes that contribute mm-hmm. to it. The primaries, yeah. as we're going to call them. So I think one that we should focus on, well, smoking, that's kind of already known for the yeah. majority of people. They, mm-hmm. They've been teaching that in schools for years now. So people know about the adverse effects of smoking. Yeah. Right. You get the uh, buildup of tar in your lungs. You also get elevated blood pressure, which we will get to in a moment. And then high stress, like you said, most people don't know or at least would think that high stress leads to such adverse health effects, not only in just your heart, but other aspects or areas of your body. Mm. And the one I would like to discuss in detail right now is the excess sugar consumption. Because we all know Mm -hmm. deep down that sugar is bad for us, but we just don't know why there's so much of it in the foods that we see today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And would you like to break that down for us, Zade? Science Zade. I'm gonna. <laughs> he signed Zade for yeah. the episode because he wrote he he did a lot of the research for this. I one. thought you used a pun there. Call me whatever you want. Break it down. <laughs> Sugars. But okay, why? Wow, that's a very intelligent joke. Well, it's because I'm a I'm I a just funny guy, that. Logan. So I I just I got to be aware. <laughs> so excess sugar consumption. You asked why do we put why do we have so much sugar in our food supply? Mm-hmm. Simple, because. It's, it's, it's a means of getting people addicted to the product, mm-hmm. and it's cheap. It's subsidized, if I, be- if I believe I'm correct. Also, historically speaking, I believe that there were certain things that happened within the industry, the scientific industry at least, mm-hmm. that led to a decrease in one element of food. Mm. Or sorry, one, um, yeah, I guess just one element of food and an increase in sugar. Do you yeah, know what I'm so talking about? so this covers the sugar industry and coronary heart disease research. So it's a historical analysis of how food companies, speci- specifically sugar companies, as well as the Heart Disease Research Institute or whatever it's, it was called back then, mm-hmm. we we know for a fact that they purposefully put cholesterol in fat as the so-called scapegoat for heart disease. Everyone, they, they put it into everyone's head that that was the main cause of heart disease. In reality, they suppressed a whole bunch of research on, research on sugar. And from that point forward, that's why most of society demonizes fat. Yeah. That's why we think of cholesterol as a negative thing. Uh, who's, who's they? The government? It was it was a, it was a combination of government and corporations and con- like c- controlled uh, companies. Controlled well, companies. Yeah. if we want to be a little more specific, perhaps there was some research that came out that was conducted, as you already mentioned, mm-hmm. by um, various sugar companies um, and other unhealthy food companies. Right. Mm-hmm. And in their research, they had discovered that cholesterol was the leading con- like contribution to heart uh, illnesses. Mm-hmm. Which is true to an extent. The buildup of cholesterol and a plaque in your arteries is what causes, you know, that elevated blood pressure, higher levels of stress, and also eventually usually a heart attack. So once that came out, they started cutting fat out of a lot of foods. Like, do you remember back in the um, late 90s, early 2000s, 50% fat, reduced Mm -hmm. fat, no fat, quarter fat, you know, it was all that. And then there was the, like... There was weird things happening too, like the biggest gulp that there was at Seven Eleven was reduced to a big gulp, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, they just, like changed, they just changed the name. Yeah, they're different ounces now. It they're... was funny because they shortened the cup but made it wider. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> logic. Very nice. That was how that was, that was being sneaky back yeah. in the day. But so now there's a demonization of fat, primarily brought on by cholesterol, right? And so then. People were eating this food, and food companies realized that consumers hate it because there's no fat. There's no flavor. Yeah. Everything tastes horrific. Mm-hmm. So what do we put in the food to substitute that? Butter. Sugar. Oh, oh butter. damn it. I knew it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it was like... <laughs> butter. <laughs> just put bacon on it. <laughs> I think that's just a, that's a stylistic decision, but yeah. <laughs> and also, actually, uh, there was a researcher named Ansel Keys... And he did a res- uh, he did a, a research paper where he studied supposedly seven countries uh, that made the connection between high cholesterol and heart disease. What he didn't mention is that he cherry picked those seven countries. It was actually a study of twenty two countries, mm-hmm. and when you add in all that data, no correlation whatsoever. 
So that was that was one of the main things that really drove the policy behind low fat, higher sugar. Mm -hmm. Flawed ideas. (laughs) (laughs) Flawed thinking. (laughs) Flawed thinking. This let's, is madness. Uh, let's cover. Uh, let's just uh, cover the titles of a couple of the sugar studies. All right, just so people know. Yeah, for sure. We'll put all the links to these down in the description below, just so you can call us out on anything that we find. You mind reading that? Yeah. Uh, the title of this is "Too Much Sugar." Even enough sugar. healthy people are at risk of developing heart disease. <laughs> Too much sugar ain't enough sugar. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what it, that's, that's what I would have written, but. <laughs> Yeah, the source is from uh, the University of Surrey, I imagine that's pronounced, or Surrey. Surrey. So here it says, uh, the study, which has been published in Clinical Science, looked at two groups of men with either high or low levels of liver fat Mm -hmm. and fed them a high or low sugar diet to find out if the amount of liver fat influences the impact of sugar on their cardiovascular health. The low sugar diet contained no more than 140 calories a day worth of sugar. Uh, an amount close to the recommended intake, while the high sugar diet contains 650 calories worth. And then let's see. So just from a caloric standpoint alone, you're already taking in, what is that, more than four times Mm -hmm. the amount of calories just because you substituted fat for sugar. And then what a lot of people don't know that's a really big problem in the U.S. is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Mm -hmm. Non-alcoholic. Wow. I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah. So this is where you consume so much sugar that your liver uh, stores an excess amount of body fat. The oh, same thing as alcoholics. Wow. Yeah. My God. So you have to exceed a certain amount. Which of, is very easy to do, yeah. A daily intake, of course. Mm-hmm. It's not just one day. Mm-hmm. So what causes the fatty liver, from what you're telling me, is the sugars within the alcohol, and that's not the actual alcohol itself. Yeah, because it just tr- uh, it converts into sugar. Good lord. Wow. And, dude, the you liver. Something new whatever day. the body does not process, dumps of it in, I guess, two different routes fat and piss and shit. <laughs> Three routes. Do you mind Three searching routes? up yeah, a healthy heart whatever. versus an unhealthy heart? Yeah, of course. <laughs> when you look at this picture, like, it's, it's wild. And what are we looking at here? Oh, my oh God. Yeah. Images. Oh, I was. No, there's a real picture. There. Which one? The, this one? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's a cartoon. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, that's not looking great, Chief. Yeah. Slap that on a grill? Mm. <laughs> you know You know what? Actually, apparently cow heart, if you mince it or slice it thin and put it in some marinade, is actually, like, really good. Yeah, I've tried it. Really? Yeah. I've tried that. I've tried chicken heart as well. And then I think that was it. Mm. Think so, those Did you ever two. eat the, uh, the beating frog heart? Oh, no. That's a thing no. in some parts of the world. They'll cut the heart out of the frog, and it's, like, still pumping, and you eat it like Get that. those good nutrients on Yeah, it. it's nuts. That's a fruit gusher, the so original. Would... <laughs> good lord. Oh, oh, it would... And what's worse is it would be, like, extra chewy, too, because it's, like, yeah, tissue. It's just, oh, my God. It's organic, like, tissue you're chewing yeah, you're, through, so it's, like, feel sticks the around for a while. You can feel the yeah. fibers. Oh, God. Sorry for the yeah. listeners. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry about that. That's a little t- too so, much. So the yellow, yeah. the yellow stuff you see around the heart, that's those are fatty deposits. Those are fatty deposits. So Otherwise that's... called adipose tissue. Okay, so that's already it's been stored in. Yeah, that might be from smoking, from sugar, a he- unhealthy lifestyle in general. My God, yeah, sheesh. Also, look at the change in color from just the muscle tissue yeah. that's left right here. Yeah, because mm-hmm. the photo of the heart that we're looking at right now, there's um quite a lot of fat around the outside but there's a little bit of the muscle showing through look at how much darker red Mm -hmm. it is than this it's It's nowhere near as vibrant too it's right there yeah and Um, then what let's cover the second study real quick dude i mean that yellowness just reminds me of someone's teeth but (laughs) for the listeners that's kind of what it looks like it looks like really dirty teeth that's the yellow on the fat that we're talking about okay and then this was uh this was just another study that backed it up and so this study is called Excessive sugar intake Mm. linked with unhealthy fat deposits provided by the European Society of Cardiology. Did you want to read anything from that? Just backs up the other study. But, you know, this this goes to show that the American public has been tricked into thinking that fat makes you fat. Like, sure, an excess calorie or 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 a caloric surplus of fat makes you fat. But fat in and of itself does not do that. So moving on from yeah. fat. 
Yeah. That, we're now going sense. to we're now going to hold the topic of debate Ooh. for today, mm. which I didn't think we were going to have on an episode about directed research relating to cardiovascular disease, but this does apply somehow. So, topic of debate for the day: Does salt take the blame for the problems excess sugar creates? And Zaid, since you're science Zaid for today. Would you like to break this down for us? First of all, I'd like to know what do you two what do you two think of salt? I know it's necessary, but in extremely high levels, it would be dangerous. No duh. Mm. I just gave the no shit answer. <laughs> what about you? I think it's unnecessary, but at the same time, I do understand that that it's that you can have some of it, you know, but in moderation. Uh, I'm more moderate with with salt, like personally. Mm -hmm. So I I actually like not really unsalted foods, but just salted to where it's not. I can't taste the salt. Like there's just flavor, you know. Yeah, I just know. I know people that just need the shaker. Just yeah, seriously. I, I can't I can't do that. <laughs> Salads, you know. I'm. Just, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Would you like a Dude, side just... of salad with that salt? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. Got some lettuce yeah. in the back if you need yeah. it. Like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my god i just know that sodium is very it's an important uh, electrolyte yeah you know it helps um yeah it helps you when you work out you know you've been sweating mm -hmm. helps you get some of that energy back and i believe it help. it does something it has something to do with being sore and alleviating that i imagine it's reducing inflammation to some degree mm -hmm. yeah but I, I believe we get like more than enough sodium through like other foods that we eat yeah you know so i'm, mm -hmm. I'm not really worried about salt Zaid would like to disagree. He would like to. Ooh. <laughs> yes, because uh, if you didn't know, the World Health Organization only recommends about a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half of salt a day. That's their upper limit recommendation. Yeah, but that's the World Health Organization. We're talking about the, the American Health yeah. Organization. Well, yeah, World Health, CDC, they all recommend the same stuff because they usually work together. Mm. But um, so back in the 1500s, actually, dietary salt was its consumption was much higher than today because they would use salt as a preservative for food. Example being salted fish. Um, and then we have an author here, what's his name? Mark Kolansky. He wrote a book called Salt, A World History. And he shows that the average consumption of salt in the 1500s was between 40 to 100 grams uh, just because of the consumption. Yeah, makes sense. Ocean foods. Yeah. Yeah. So the idea that mainstream health is trying to push is that salt is a direct contributor to health disease mm -hmm. or heart disease. But if that was the case, then why was the first reported case of a heart attack in the mid 1600s? Which specific mm. name, if you wanted to know, Edward Hyde, first Earl of Clarendon's father. Well, also people back in the day, I imagine they had a much more active lifestyle than we do today. Mm -hmm. Or much more sedentary, like they had to move all day in order to just get the bare necessities. Yeah. Meanwhile, all we got to do, we're sitting like 90% of the day or lying down, you yeah. know? So I, I just imagine that they were able to actually utilize that salt efficiently and properly. And they most likely needed that much back yeah. in the day in comparison to two today. Actually, so. um, brain activity today exceeds physical. We don't, we don't move around. You're right. We you're think a lot right. more, I would imagine. Yeah, even when you're driving, you're technically sitting. You're not really moving, but you think like you did something but just because your, your brain is active. Mm. Mm. Yeah. But even then, we're talking about four to 100 times more in terms of grams a day. Um, and then from the early 1800s until World War II, Western societies consume between 15 to 17 grams daily. And then after the introduction of refrigeration, so you don't need sodium to preserve your food, that dropped to about half of its rate, so at around nine, nine grams a day. Mm. And then go down a little bit. Mr. Mr. Grams over here. So it begs the question. We've had low sodium intake for the past 50 to 70 years. Mm-hmm. Why is it that the prevalence of hypertension, high blood pressure, is now three times as high as in the beginning, as beginning of the 1990s? That's an interesting point. 
if salt is a main cause to heart disease, directly contributes to it, then why do we see an inverse relationship between the, those two metrics? It's a good, it's a good point. And yeah. I'm I'm fairly convinced it, that yeah. salt is taking the blame for sugar for the for the effects that sugar causes, because it's everywhere in our food. We consume at least a hundred grams of sugar a day. Yeah, we reduce our salt intake. I'm Goes just, to show. I'm trying not to think in the ways of like a conspiracy right now. <laughs> right. You You're know? trying to like step back <laughs> from it for a moment. Yeah. So I, I really don't know how I feel about that. But it's one of those conspiracies that is, it's true. Because it's just about money and manipulation and um, governmental rules. Mm -hmm. But also us as the consumer, don't we kind of incite them to do that to a degree? We buy their product. Yeah, like we're we always talk about the moral high ground, you know, stand fight up against or fight against sugar, do this, do that, and it all sounds great in theory. But at the end of the day, you're still buying all that sugar and eating all that shit. Like if you want to prove to companies that you you're sick of this, you don't want to see it anymore, stop eating it because they'll stop putting it out and put something else out that's healthier, yeah. better for you. Like this product line is not working. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not trying to blame solely people on this, right? Yeah, it's equal blame from both parties because the corporations can't help themselves and neither can we. Mm. Yeah. The mice are hungry. Yeah. And we're taking it all. So until we find like an alternative that's going to be like healthy and people want to consume it over traditional sugar, mm -hmm. we're going to be in kind of a rough patch. Because right now, the mo uh, this good Lord, the majority of Americans are hooked, addicted to sugar. Absolutely. And like the overwhelming majority are addicted to sugar, whether they know it or not. Like, mm. yeah. I mean, most of us, we us don't know three, it. Us three, two, you maybe less than us two. Like, we're probably sugar addicts. I don't have that much anymore. Like, I try to watch it as much as yeah. possible. But I have a sweet tooth, so I have to watch out for sure. Because I can I mean, take it too far. You probably eat more sugar than I do. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Because he does it in one sitting. So it's kind of like. That's true. Like, it's like I go six days like, good. And then you one just go day, I'm just deep. Fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> just go deep on some yeah, cookies. Yeah. like, I want some food. ice cream. I want, I want two cookies, one chocolate, one peanut butter. And then I want. The, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This wait. is the only man I've seen who will buy a cake and then go back in to buy cookies. So. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's a problem. <laughs> He's like, I couldn't snack on the cake. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, here's another piece of information. Let's look at South Korea. Yeah, South Korea, kimchi, what else do they eat? A lot of fish. They they put heavy salt on their vegetables and and on their meat especially. Yeah. yeah. They eat about 4000 milligrams of salt a day, almost twice the US dietary yeah. uh, guidelines. And, and it's probably naturally salted too, most of it. Yeah, it's good like salt. Like ocean foods, you know. Mm -hmm. Let's hope. That's good salt, but like just because salt is good does not mean it's good. <laughs> just because right? it's high quality doesn't Yeah, mean it doesn't mean it, yeah, it's good for you. Yeah. But despite that, despite the 4,000 milligrams a day, they have the lowest rates of heart disease in the world. I was trying to figure out why, because their male population smokes much more than ours do. Their female population doesn't almost at all. Mm. Like, I just Googled a statistic for it, and they said that females in South Korea smoke at a rate of 7%-ish, and then uh, the men smoke at like 407 and Jesus. then in America... And these were taken in 2015, 2016, so you have to leave some lee room for change. But in America, it was like, I think it was 17% of men smoked, and then like 13 or 14% of women did. <laughs> but I do agree with you that I think the reason, or one of the main reasons our rates are higher, is because of just excess sugar consumption. I can't imagine what else it would be. Well, seed oils, as we'll get down later on, you know? Okay, then. <laughs> I guess there are more. But yeah. in terms of the salt intake, do I think we should be having 40 to 100 grams of salt a day? No. Absolutely. God, no. For you to recommend that to people on the diets and exercise plans that the majority of us have, that's dangerous. Like, very yeah, dangerous. Yeah, that, that equates to about two to three small table shakers of salt, I believe. Could you imagine having a table shaker of salt a day? My God. Yeah, too too much of of a good thing can be bad. Of course, we know of the Japanese people who they actually commit suicide by drinking a pint to a pint and a half of, of a salt. salt solution. Oh my God! 
Oh, it's insane. It sounds brutal. Yeah, from the tongue all the way to your throat, dude. dude. Just yeah. jump off a cliff. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, no I guess. You. Well, with the salt, it would just stop their heart, right? I would assume. Assume probably so, clog their arteries too. May I don't know. That doesn't seem like. Uh, never. Let's not get into that. I don't know, uh, but it just yeah, seems but like forty to hundred okay. grams to recommend that to anybody except somebody who's you know running twenty to fifty miles a day out in the Sahara like is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I would say around probably five to fifteen grams is reasonable. No, I would say that's highly unreasonable too. I mm. would actually agree with the WHO or the CDC. I wouldn't because with the level of sugar you're having to put that much of a strain on you. Well, this is assuming that people just cut out sugar for the most part. They're not going to. That's the that's the thing. We got to be semi realistic. Like, yeah, in a perfect world, it would yeah. be lovely if everybody could just consume five to ten grams of salt every day because we need to. But now we don't because mm -hmm. the majority of us haven't exercised in a year. Yeah, good point. And I'm not saying to focus on the number. I'm saying go by taste. If it's too salty, that that's an indicator that your body has had enough. It's pretty your your body's intelligent. Your body is much smarter than we give it credit for. Yeah, it's I very mean, good at healing itself and doing miraculous. What are some salt benefits? Do you know, you remember what Cascada said, right? Cas who? Cascada. No, yeah. Who is that? It's it's a Euro um, like EDM techno <laughs> from the nineties. What did he say? What? Yeah. What did Cascada say? <laughs> Listen to your heart. When he's calling for you. I do know that song. That was from the 90s? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow, I thought that was a much more recent song. No, 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 no. But yeah, there you go. But did you know that salt has some very important functions? Such as, it's needed by the heart to pump blood properly. It's also needed by things like the stomach to facilitate digestion. And it's necessary for bone formation and strength. And it's... Lastly, a key component in cell-to-cell -cell communication, and it is the optimal transmission, or provides the optimal transmission of nerve impulses to and from organs such as the heart and brain. And then to back that up, we have a boatload of studies. <laughs> oh, well, that begs the question: Is that salt, or is that electrolytes that do that? We're talking about just the sodium molecule. Just sodium. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Did you want me to read these as well? Just a, just a few of them. Just get the mind jogging. Studies have shown that pregnant women develop a marked craving for salt and that women on a low salt diet compared to a high salt diet cause more miscarriages, stillbirths, and premature babies. That's a big claim. That's a huge claim. That is an enormous claim. Study to back it up. Also, what does, what's a low salt and high salt diet comparison? I assume the low salt is in accordance with the WHO recommendation. The WHO? Oh, this one you have to you have to be granted access. Oh, I do? How did you read it then? Actually, wait. Science Direct. Let's just do accept all cookies. Click Science Direct. Right here? Yeah, at the bottom? Yeah. yeah. Right there, sir. The Lancet. There we go. Wait, how old is this study? In the 1430s. I'm just <laughs> they did a salt study <laughs> in fucking from 1430. Like 1400, <laughs> Shit's old. <sighs> Let's Pass just go to show that it's this. This has been known forever. Pass me the eye salt. I was gonna say mate. <laughs> mate. <laughs> Method. So many. Patients were considered to have toxemia if their blood pressure rose to above 140 over 90. Dude, but it, this does look really old. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, this does look like... Oh, 1958. Yeah, 1958. Good Lord, I think there was some more recent <laughs> research to come yeah. out than that. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> make it illegitimate. Hey, wait, do they... Okay. Do they have Plum X metrics? It says they do. <laughs> that's funny. If that's the case, I will trust it. If Plum X. Citation indexes. Yep, I will trust it. Yeah. They're still going off of research from the 50s. I guess what's right is right. Can we go to the main notes? That makes it. Yeah, main notes, sorry. That seems like a crazy claim. Yeah. Though. And then um, salt restriction impedes fetal growth and specifically stunts the development of the cardiovascular organs or decreases the number of nephrons in the kidney. Yeah. A whole bunch of dorky, dorky shit that you can go over later. 
Now, there are benefits to salt, obviously. And I'm arguing, I'm trying to argue that there are so many benefits, and if you're smart about it, that it is part of a healthy lifestyle. The idea that, especially as an athlete, that I should just recommend, I should just consume one and a half t tablespoons of salt, mm -hmm. that would, I would get cramps all day, I would be more at risk for a heart attack, because my, my heart's not pumping efficiently, so forth. I, maybe I have low sodium. Maybe that's what's causing a lot of the yeah. <laughs> dizziness, headaches. Now that I'm thinking about it, it might be low so sodium. So dizziness, headaches, that's all linked with too much salt. It, too little. Too little. Think about... But also, if too much, you could probably get the same. <laughs> yeah. Think about the ketogenic diet. There's something called the keto flu where you have headaches, dizziness, mm -hmm. and that is because ketones, um, the fat energy that your body Sorry. uses after it burns carbs, it pulls a lot of the salt out of your kidneys because that's required for the body. So that's why you experience dizziness, headaches, mm. um, cramps. The you list goes it. on. I might need like a paper towel. You're you do good, it? bro. I'm sweating. sweating. Oh, yeah, you have the computer on you. <laughs> yeah, I do. Should I just go for the sleeve wipe or is that gross? Go for the sleeve wipe. Go, go for the sleeve wipe. Hell yeah, go for the sleeve wipe. <sighs> we, we are. We are nothing. We're human beings. Men. We're men. <laughs> yeah, we're men. This is, hey, this is sodium. This we're is sodium human, right here. We're human beings. We're men. <laughs> this is why I need we're more salt. men. <laughs> Masculine yeah, exactly. forces. Um, salt is tricky. Oh, That's what it comes down to. It's tricky. It's, you, you need it, but you don't need it. It's not tricky, though. Here's the thing. <laughs> Morton okay. salt. You've, you've seen Break Morton salt, for example. The black yeah. label, little girl with the umbrella. Yeah, that's uh, terrible salt. That is garbage. Yeah, iodized salt. Yeah, because they just isolate the sodium chloride and they remove everything else. Mm -hmm. No mineral, nothing. So that's why I'm usually an advocate of either Celtic sea salt, Redmond's real salt, uh, or Himalayan. And I actually read a lot of the Himalayan salt is bullshit. Yeah, a lot of his like, diet. I've heard... Yeah, I've... the majority of Himalayan salt is not Himalayan salt because can you imagine how hard it would be to feed the world on salt from the Himalayas? Yeah. <laughs> It was actually a study. Uh, I haven't looked it up in a while. There's but a documentary too. Yeah. Microplastics were a big problem for Himalayan salt. I'm not surprised. Yeah, it makes sense. How does it make sense though? Let's explain that to the audience. Oh, yeah, our ocean's filled with plastic. Oh, that's what you were referring to. Yeah, I thought you were just talking about cheap fillers. No, no, no. Because it's it's rock. They get it from from the earth. Well, really, <laughs> really. I, I wonder why. <laughs> Good lord. I mean, yeah, there's just a whole bunch of other studies. Maybe common knowledge to you, but <laughs> you would be surprised. <laughs> oh, here's here's also an interesting one. The effect on insulin seems to be so significant. Go up a little. That a study published in the Metabolism Journal found that just one week on a low sodium diet caused the onset of insulin resistance in a group of healthy volunteers. Insulin resistance. In other words, it's called diabetes, which directly contributes to heart disease. So why are we demonizing this? Demonizing what? Salt? No, I'm not saying, salt. dude, we never said salt was bad. We're just saying excess levels of salt are dangerous. No, I'm talking in general. I'm gonna... Oh. Yeah. Why? Why? Yeah, because it's ridiculous. the way I see, we can't trust the source of anything anymore. You really can't. Like I, I was that's what it about that really does day. come down to, kind of like. There's no source that I trust. Like after watching Seaspiracy, I can't go to a sushi place now, which bums me yeah. out because I love sushi. You just trust yeah, up, product which... placement now or product design. <laughs> there are good companies out there. <laughs> you know, if it looks healthy, you best believe I'm going to try it. You know. Mm -hmm. mm. But that's the thing. You can market it however you want. That's kind of scary. It's true. Got to be educated as a consumer. Mm -hmm. like that. That's the thing. Unless you want to be a normie. So just to link it all back to cardiovascular health, yeah. because that is what this episode is about. Excess levels of sugar obviously cause strains on the heart. And traditionally speaking, our bodies require a higher level of sodium, or which we get from salt. And I mean, there's excess minerals that come with salts, but let's just talk about the sodium for this instance. Mm -hmm. Sodium plays an important role in cardiovascular health, um, transferring information, electrical signals from the brain yep. into the heart and other areas of the body, some other functions as well. And so sodium is important, but only if you're on a diet, in my opinion, sorry, if you want a, what you consider to be a healthy level of sodium, five to 15 grams a day, 
if you want to be that extreme about it, you have to be excessively active. You I'd say to, probably, you know, five to seven. How about that? Just five to, to seven, sure. I think would be, I would still say three and a half to five. If, if I was to put a number sure. on it, which I'm not a scientist. Mm -hmm. If I had to just guesstimate, because if you're active running around, I mean, it's recommended that we have 2.3 grams today. The average American consumes 3.2 grams a day, which the WHO and the CDC both deem as too much, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And the main reason for that is our sedentary lifestyles that are fed by high volumes of sugar. So we can't have the amount that our body requires, which leads to more decay of the hearts, other or, or sorry, of your heart, other organs, your heart functions, things of that nature. Yeah. So in order to live more optimally involving by including more salt into your diet, you got to reduce that sugar intake, got to get active multiple times a week. And then hopefully in the long run, maybe things will start to stabilize. Hopefully it'll start to fix you a little bit. And the reason why you have that three and a half to five grams of sodium a day is to rebuild yourself, give yourself some electrolytes, no more cramping, no more dehydration. And junk food diets have a lot of sugar. That's, that's also what, a key thing to That's what I'm about. referring yeah. to. Yeah. And especially things you wouldn't think have a lot of sugar in them have a lot of sugar. That's the thing. It, it could be like, it's, it's not, it doesn't necessarily have to be a dessert. People think it has to be like candy or something. No, I hate to break it to you, but there's a lot of foods that have sugar. <laughs> Chips, uh, bagels. sandwiches, bagels, yeah. You know, I think croissants too. Like, Yeah, and one 16 fluid ounce Starbucks Frappuccino, which I believe is their, is that the Grande? Mm -hmm. Grande. Yeah, the Grande. the Grande. The Grande 16 or is it 12? The Grande 16, the tall is 12. Okay, I thought the tall was 10. I don't know why. Anyways. So a grande frappuccino, the mm. cafe vanilla frappuccino, has 69 grams of sugar. Great way to start your yeah. morning, right? That is insane. I'm pretty sure it was 68, but they were like, let's round it up one. I know. Like, <laughs> we just got to... <laughs> For the joke. We, we love it, but can we just bump it up yeah, just yeah, one more just gram? One more just, just one. Just get a little bump in there. Up. Just Dude, something. Think about this. You start your morning. It's it's 9 or 10 a.m., mm -hmm. and you have you are 70% of the way there to 100 grams of, of sugar. And that's if you get a frap. I mean, if you get a vanilla latte, 35 grams of sugar. The skinny, this is the skinny cinnamon dolce latte, which if there could be a, sk a skinny cinnamon mm -hmm. <laughs> dolce latte, I, I just still don't believe it. It's 16 grams of sugar. It's absolutely And the insane. original cinnamon dolce latte, do they even have one? Yeah, the original, not the skinny, has 40 grams of sugar. My God. Jesus. That's, that's coffee. Yeah. That's why coffee should, you just, just drink it black. Straight up. <laughs> just drink it black. Just drink the bean. Drink the bean. There we go. <laughs> Starbucks. Yeah. Drink, drink the, the bean. bean. <laughs> It might be the only thing on here with zero grams of sugar. It's just a, co uh, a cafe americano. Mm. Cafe. That's scary, man. That's the thing. I was I, I remember seeing this YouTube video before, and um, I think it was who who was it? It was a filmmaker YouTuber, whatever. But him and his wife, mm -hmm. they decided to not have sugar for a month. And they just completely cut out sugar. So what mm -hmm. they did was every time they went shopping, anything that had even half a gram of sugar, they're not getting it. Whether it was bread, whether it was anything, right? It's tough. It's tough. And they were like, it's actually tough to shop for. You cannot find anything. We can't, in we're, we literally don't enjoy our food uh, because, you know, it's very, very fine-tuned right now. Mm -hmm. um, they were getting headaches for the first 10 days, mm -hmm. but it was consecutive for like one, two, three, maybe four days. And then it stopped and they came back a little bit and then it was stopped. So it was kind of like their bodies going through a withdrawal process. Big time. And they were like, wow, we are heavily addicted to sugar. We don't know it until after the following week. That's when you start going crazy. And they said that their headspace started changing. Um, the way they looked at environments, like their awareness was changing. I was like, what? I assume skin, weight, everything. Yeah. Just um, dark circles started going away a little bit. Sleep was better and more calm. Mm -hmm. um, like... 
I wish I could find the video, but um, there's no better way to fuck yourself up than to consume a high it's sugar just, diet. It's just it's crazy. I think the craziest part is they they went back to sugar. <laughs> 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 yep, we're not addicted anymore. Not like you say, yeah. balance. You know, enjoy some fruit occasionally. Mm -hmm. But as far as like the processed stuff is, just try to stay away from it as much as possible. I cannot believe he just said that. What fruit? No, no, he just referred to me. He said like you say all the time. Yeah, balance. <laughs> balance. Balance. I don't lean left. I don't lean right. Where do I go? In the middle. <laughs> there we go. Forward we go. <gasps> yes, Research sir. Up. I'm just looking at, um, I'm trying to find this statistic that I read a couple uh, weeks ago mm -hmm. where it was um, like an ancient person's diet. They would only consume, I think, for the entire year. It was something like 2 to 20 grams of sugar for a full year. Now we're in the pounds. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I got to just say this real quick. <laughs> but did you know that the equivalent of a dollar store here in the UK is called <laughs> Pound Town? <laughs> <laughs> and then one of my friends, look, I told that to one of my friends. He looked at me and he was like, damn, dude. Sorry, man. You want to hang out? Nah, man, I can't. I got to take grandma to Pound Town. <laughs> The UK is such a weird ass place. Dude. <laughs> I was like, it I just doesn't make any sense for Americans. Go back to the note. What's you saw that meme too. Yeah. I'm sorry, but yeah, this I'm just thinking about this. If you handed an ancient person a grande white hot chocolate <laughs> from Starbucks, it would be more than three times the amount of sugar. They would sorry, by drinking that, they would consume more than three times their annual consumption of sugar in one sitting. Oh my god. And some oh people have this. Every day. That's... Some people get this shit from Starbucks multiple times a day. Oh. I think that's why people feel anxious when they get Starbucks. You think? Like, they're like, that's the only coffee that just makes me feel jittery. It's probably the sugar mixture, too. It's, yeah, it's definitely the it's sugar. It's probably the, the uh, sh just shy of 70 well, that, grams. That plus the caffeine must be insane. Oh, Do yeah, you understand a... that it's not 10 grams, not 20, 30, or 40? No. Not even 50. <laughs> a set. <laughs> <laughs> Almost 70. Wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I gotta... That is a lot, dude. And you're not even going to count the rest of the food for the day. No. Here, Zayn, you're I'm, easily I'm hitting this like over to my screen because I want to see how many, um, what the highest sugar content drink. Yeah. I'm sorry. That was just. You want me to keep going? Yeah, yeah. That was more intense than the actual research, dude. <laughs> Starbucks research. Bro, it's wild. That's not including, you know, some people start out with cereal in the morning and then they have their, their frappuccino. Oh my God. How many? Bro, can you pl like, please, please look up cereal. Or, or what about people, they have oatmeal in the morning, they think they're being healthy and then they just take like a quarter of a cup of brown sugar yeah, and, and just, dump it I, in that shit and then put raisins, which have a crazy amount of sugar on it. Brown and then sugar's they take healthier. cranberries because they think that's healthy. And then they grab a banana because they think that's healthy, but has an insane amount of sugar in it too. <laughs> potassium bro oh but bro that's fructose that's healthy yeah that's a healthy sugar yeah sure whatever you say <laughs> and and there's an inverse relationship between how much sugar you can consume and how that lowers your levels of certain nutrients such as potassium or minerals um yeah it's wild okay i keep doing that but i don't know why sorry zade what you doing boy all right, let's get back to uh, <laughs> let's get back to heart health. Random. Let's get back. Yeah. Let's get focused. So we've covered salt, sugar. Oh, this is the big, big daddy topic. Dude, I had no idea that uh, lard was actually good fat. Depends on the source. Yeah, that's that's very questionable. But now we get into the real territory where it's where we're talking about high cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Um. So for nearly a century, people have demonized saturated fat. Uh, which they contribute with high cholesterol, uh, commonly found in meats, pork, lamb, whole fat dairy, cheese, butter, you name it, anything, any fat source, it's included. Mm -hmm. But there are a few studies that have uh, gone against that idea. And of course, we've discussed Ansel, Ansel Keys and all of that stuff. But besides saturated fat, I want to focus down on vegetable oil. Yeah. Which I think is a much bigger problem than refined sugar because your body can process sugar correct it has the ability to pro even large amounts of it yes your body does not have the ability to handle vegetable oil because it's a fat 
any fat you consume makes up the fat within your cells. Mm. So I, I don't know about the, spe- the statistics specifically, but I believe uh, there have been there's been research showing that it takes uh, on average forty years to totally remove vegetable oil from your from your body. Forty. Four. Okay. Thank but God. I'm not sure. So that might be wrong. Yeah. It's it's kind of like the other myths with the like the whole smoking thing. There's mm-hmm. like it's always fifty fifty. Mm-hmm. Like your lungs don't reach one hundred percent capacity in like I don't know six months for every year you smoked or something like I don't know. Yeah. Sorry, it yeah. it was sixty nine grams. It was the cafe vanilla frappuccino blended beverage. They don't even call it a drink, just beverage. Yeah. That's bad. Which so, you know, it's probably more than that. Don't order the way that. they they pump yeah. that shit. They just, just load it. Pump, just load it up. Yeah, just it's probably sixty nine grams on a good day. Oh no! Well, this is from their website, so it's probably the minimum level yeah. of sugar yeah. you can get. Oh my God! So vegetable oils. What are vegetable oils? We have canola oil, soybean oil, mm-hmm. margarine, sunflower oil, corn oil, palm oil, and rapeseed oil. The hell's rapeseed? I, I think you mean grapeseed. No, it's rapeseed. That's a sp- specific type of oil. I gotta Google that, but continue. The hell. What? Okay. It's both rapeseed and grapeseed. Um. Those are what we call vegetable oils and what you want to stay away from based on the latest research. It looks like a flower. Hmm. It's like a little yellow flower. Sorry to interrupt you, Zay. Yeah. No, no worries. All right, continue. And then on the other side, we have the good fats, uh, which it depends, but we have lard, tallow, coconut oil, ghee, butter, olive oil, avocado oil. And generally, I usually, I focus more on coconut oil, ghee, Butter, olive oil, and avocado oil. I don't use lard or tallow that much. That's that's a good selection right there. Yeah. I like your lineup. <laughs> Solid lineup, bro. <laughs> and then no, we I'm serious. Yeah, I don't have I don't yeah. have anything to complain about that. Yeah. But let's look into the let's look into the yeah, studies. But 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 like we said before, even if it's a good thing, too much of it is generally bad. Well, that can go for basically anything. Basically anything, yeah. Well, I mean, like water, one of the most important, one of the most important things on the planet. If you drink too much, you'll die. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Vegetable oils lead to insulin resistance. Mm-hmm. We have vegetable oils cause obesity. And do vegetable oils raise heart di- uh, disease risk? Yes, they do. <laughs> and these were all published now- by one guy. Not published by him. He's referring to other other studies. Um, but go to the first no, link. No, well, I mean the articles are published by this guy. Oh, okay, yeah. Go to the fr- I believe that go down. This is the first link. Okay, so th- this is something I wanted to bring up with uh, the ketogenic study on mice, mm-hmm. and uh, that they found insulin resistance. So they took these mice, they put them on a supposedly keto diet, right? When you look into the research, so the headline says, keto diet scientists find link to diabetes risk. Mm -hmm. What they actually fed these mice, if you go down a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go down. There. What the, what, so 90% of the fat calories that came, that came from fat, they were sourced from Crisco and corn oil, vegetable oils. So off the bat, that is not a ketogenic diet. This mm-hmm. is a shit study, clearly. And I assume it was funded by Big Food. Big Food. Yeah, Big <laughs> not, Food. Not Lil Pits. <laughs> yeah. For all the Rick and Morty fans out there. Big gas. Lil Pits. Lil Pits. Okay. Okay. So, no to vegetable oils. Absolutely no, not. You, if you can avoid vegetable oils. Please at do. All and any costs, you definitely should. Yeah. If you want to prolong your life. Yeah. Live as also long as just possible. like, what? Sesame oil. I don't know which one that falls. I don't falls. know about sesame. Yeah, no clue. I would imagine that falls into the bad fats category if I had to guess. But dude, it even. It sounds like bad fat to me too. <laughs> Especially the way I feel that. It sounds like a bad fat. Yeah, I don't even, like the way it sounds. It yeah, sounds bad. But it sounds bad, dude. <laughs> Sesame. Oil. Even when you look at how these oils, the the seed oils, are manufactured, it's just it's like a twenty four step process. Fumigate. What? Like chemicals on chemicals on chemicals. It's ridiculous. Twenty four step process. It's insane, dude. That sounds like Breaking Bad. Like, 
And I know most of you at home are thinking like, well, how hard could it be to get soybean oil? Don't you just squish it? Yeah. That is probably how you would get it. But the thing is, they process them so that they last on shelves even longer. And that's where a lot of the unhealthy stuff comes from as well, mm. are the preservatives and additives that they put into the oils. Yeah. So, moving on. Zaid wants to talk about cholesterol. Cholesterol is very, is very, with me, it's just 50-50. Like, I've always felt 50-50 about it. You won't after this. You sure about that? I'm sure about that. All right, let's do so it. It's complicated. Send subject. me off to the moon. wrong. Or proves Saeed wrong. Uh, a lot of people don't know that your body actually produces cholesterol every single day. Uh, around four to five eggs per day. Mm-hmm. Um, four to five eggs worth. But the confusion around cholesterol is that we, the conventional, no, conventional notion is that there's a good cholesterol and a bad cholesterol. HDL is the quote-unquote good. LDL is the quote-unquote bad. So high-density lipo, lipoprotein is the first, and then low-density lipoprotein is LDL. Um, but it turns out that it's a lot more complicated th- than that because there are different sizes and densities to each of those categories. Mm-hmm. And this comes from the work of Dr. Rhonda Patrick. In, um, she interviewed Dr. Ron Krauss, which is he's a professor of nutritional sciences at UC Berkeley. He showed that particle size matters. So having an LDL cholesterol profile with a greater number of smaller, dense LDL particles. I think you should mention that he's an adjunct uh, faculty member at UC Berkeley, which means he's not like that's not his primary school. His primary school is the uh, yeah. School of Pediatrics and Medicine at UCSF. Mm-hmm. So the thing with the small LDL is that they actually carry less cholesterol uh, than the more buoyant variety of LDL. And it, they run a greater risk of hitting the artery walls, mm-hmm. and they, they are also more likely to bind to the wall and then oxidize over time. Ah. So if you think about it, the big yeah. HDL and LDL, it just floats through. But the small ones, they, they're denser, so they fall to the... Yeah, they can get stuck mean, on the artery, creating walls. HD, HDLs go through and the LDLs fall. No, there are two types of LDLs. Oh, there's two. There's a large and a small. Okay. okay, You want to avoid the small. And where where the confusion is with cholesterol is because of this small density LDL causing damage, cholesterol actually serves one of its functions is to heal the artery wall. So it goes in there, repairs the patch, and that's why people have associated high cholesterol with more heart disease. Mm. It's it's the equivalent of a firefighter putting out the fire. Mm-hmm. It's not the sole and then problem. blaming the firefighter. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. And it all depends on what you eat. Could you imagine the stew's on fire? Guy comes, sets it out. What the fuck, dude? The come fuck on, hell, dude. Come on, man. We talked about this. <laughs> <laughs> and this is mm. sorry, just to carry the metaphor forward. And then people advocate against firefighters. <laughs> like we need to reduce firefighters in fuck our societies. All. They're dangerous. Meanwhile, fires are raging in the background. We need to cut down on firefighters. <laughs> they only lift weights 80% of the time. They barely do anything. Now, we brought in this new force, which is the Department of Sanitation, to take care <laughs> of oh. the fires. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm just kidding. Oh, my God. Comparing the government to the body. Anyways, yeah. you're saying today? <laughs> and then I believe we have yeah. a section for, yep. Yeah. Cholesterol benefits and functions, as I mentioned, building block for human tissue. Yeah. Helps regulate membrane and fluid over uh, the range of psychological temperatures, cell transporters, a bunch of dorky stuff. What hormones about- and vitamin D. Huge, huge benefits for hormones and yeah. vitamin D. What role do uh, triglycerides play in this? Because I know it's a, it's a, is it a form of cholesterol or is it a factor of cholesterol? It's a lipid, so it's another type of fat. Okay. Um, and from, so, when you, when you take a blood test and you look at your cardiovascular health, there are a whole bunch of stuff. You'll have HDL, LDL, and then you'll have triglycerides, trigl- triglyceride to HDL ratio. The most important metric to look at is triglyceride to HDL ratio because that shows the level of inflammation within your, within your body and within your arteries. I think that's very valuable information. So yeah. We all do blood tests, and then we rely on our doctors to just tell us, right? Mm-hmm. But... 
Make sure you have high LD, uh, high HDL. Don't worry about the LDL too much. Uh, make sure all levels of inflammation are down. Uh, HDL to triglyceride ratio is down, and you should be you should be good in that department. Mm. Very spicy stuff. And cholesterol, just like salt, has been demonized over the past 50, 60 years. Yeah. So this is an episode about cardiovascular health. Yep. Why do I get heartburn whenever I eat the triple fire alarm wings from Buffalo Wild Wings? You fucking with me? Yeah, definitely. I don't <laughs> eat that shit. Yeah. I was like, I don't. <laughs> you're like, that's a flavor. The first place yeah. in your mind when you're like, that flavor doesn't even exist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's not even that. I like, like, bro, it's the atomic wings, though. No, I, I really was like, did you step foot in a Buffalo Wild Wings? <laughs> <laughs> I used to like Buffalo Wild Wings. Yeah, back, well, back when, was, it, when they were actually wings. You know? They had good flavors. Like, now it's just breading. <laughs> just increase your risk of like, there's, breading, there's chicken in there. You'll find it. Yeah. Just keep Somewhere. biting. <laughs> keep, just keep gnawing bite. on it. <laughs> My God. The only crunch I had today was freaking... Crunch fitness. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I would say, uh, oh, crunching that. There's all of the... And then we, all, we also have links. studies to show that there's a strong correlation between high cholesterol mm -hmm. and people who live longer. Yeah, and all these studies mm -hmm. were done uh, in, like, I guess, different years and different... Yeah, but they're, they're good studies nonetheless, yeah. so... Okay. We'll definitely post these links then. For yeah, the, in the well, description. I think we should, just for accountability reasons. Oh, well, yeah. But to summarize... Yeah. Just to come full circle of everything we've talked about, because we've kind of, of been all over the place, and it's a full lot to talk about, like circle. Zade said. Mm -hmm. Sugar's bad. Sounds like a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. Very important to know, because in order for you to live healthily, you need to reduce your sugar intake. Also up the exercise. This is all generic stuff that we know, too. That's the funny thing. We all know this to some extent. But it's not. I'm going to give counter yeah. advice later. Yeah. Like, yeah. once we get down yeah. to the other... Other things. Okay. So the average amount of salt you should be taking in realistically, or at least according to how we used to live, is three and a half to five-ish grams, grams, somewhere yeah. in that neighborhood. But that's only if you live a low-sugar, active lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, by adding high levels of salt into a diet where you consume a lot of sugar and don't exercise regularly, could have severe adverse health effects. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go by taste. If you exercise a lot more, increase your your uh, salt intake, sugar intake. Yeah. Increase your sugar. Yeah, because you're sweating, you're excreting sodium and other minerals, so you yeah. have to replace them. That's how heat stroke happens. That's how a lot of those problems start to yeah. you know occur. It's a bunch of things doing. That. Also, we've been talking about cutting a lot of things out of diets, so I'm gonna keep going. Bad fats. We don't want them in there. That's the canolas, the soybeans, margarine, sunflower, corn, palm, and grapeseed oils of the world. Mm. You want, in comparison to that, good fats, such as, I'm going to exclude that first one because most sources of lard are not going to be yeah. ample, good, or healthy fats. Yeah, at So all. that would be things like tallow, coconut oil, ghee, butter, olive oil, and avocado oil. That means eggs are excellent. Fatty cuts of steak, if you get it pasteurized, excellent. Um, cooking butter, cooking coconut oil, avocado, all mm -hmm. of them, you should be set. Eat more of those because your hormones and, and the health of your body depends on it. Cholesterol. It is important. Who would have guessed? Science, many years ago, it turns out. Um, so there's two different types of cholesterol. It's HDL and LDL. And then um, there's a couple different types of each one of those. And the ones you have to be careful for are uh, the LDLs more specifically than the HDLs. Both HDLs and LDLs can be large uh, quantities of cholesterol that flow through the heart healthily. They don't chunk off and fall to the bottom, mm -hmm. unlike some of the bad LDLs, which are a little bit denser and they sink to the bottom, and that's what causes excessive plaque buildup over time. And yep. uh, actually, one of the markers you can look at for LDL is called ApoB in a blood test. So that would be an indicator of the small, dense particles, which you want all the way down. There you go. Yeah. Um, that's crazy. So we also that's... learned that size does matter because you do <laughs> want big cholesterol yeah. particles going through you. Your bloodstream, <laughs> if you can. <laughs> Screw you. That is funny. <laughs> also, 
just a couple statistics to remind you about the negatives of cardiovascular yeah. disease. It's the number one killer in the U.S. today. It's responsible for a third of the deaths worldwide annually. Uh, the rates of heart disease keep increasing year by year. They're not going down, and they don't seem to be going down anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Things such as smoking, high stress, excessive sugar consumption, no duh, sedentary lifestyle, already mentioned it, and high blood pressure will lead to the demise of your cardiovascular health in Forever. the long run. Forever. And uh, just a few other important recommendations. Sunshine expo sunlight exposure. Vitamin Being on that, obviously, D. sun chubbin. Vitamin D is crucial for artery health and a lot of other things. Uh, sauna use, especially as you get older, it's led to, I think, studies on saunas have shown a 50 to 60% reduction in heart disease. Preferably not a steam room. Yes. Yeah. So sauna is very important. Uh, cold showers, as we mentioned in one of the last episodes. A lot of episodes. <laughs> what else? What else? Walking. Just walk. Walk more. 15, 30 yeah. minute walk. And especially after a meal, too. Yes. Just like a nice little 10 to 15 minute walk if you can get it in. You mm. know, that helps digest the food a little bit. Helps you process it. Reduces blood sugar, yeah. There you go. Yeah. So, thank you for joining us yeah. on episode 82. A continuation of our mini-series into the public health crisis is facing the U.S. and the world abroad. We talked about cardiovascular health. We went over some conspiracies, potentially, mm -hmm. or they could be viewed as that. We have proved, at least through our own conducted research, that there are certain things in the past that were deemed to be healthier than they truly are, or than the general public would be led to believe. And cardiovascular disease is not going away anytime soon. Mm -hmm. And the change starts you. Yeah. Oh, so inspirational. You I best know, believe right? it. I know you like that deep down inside. Mm -hmm. So thank you for joining us. Yep. Once and with again. that being said, we got YouTube pages. We got we a do. Spotify. We got a Twitter. We got an we Instagram. Do. We do. Almost all we of do. which you can find with the username, or sorry, with the name, the 2AM Podcast. Exactly. And we also have a Clips channel on YouTube, the 2AM Clips. Who would have guessed? So simple. So straightforward. Forward. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Balance. Not left, not, not right. right. Forward. Forward. <laughs> exactly. All right, guys. Yeah, but also please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube pages. Also drop us a five-star review. Review. Thank you. <laughs> I was, there were so many, I don't know why the word that came to mind was periodical. Oh my like, God. Five You're star. such a fucking dork. Please write a five-star periodical on, <laughs> on, a, on here, yeah. yeah. You don't say, huh? Yeah. No, but please leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. It really helps us out. Share as much as you can. We appreciate it. Yeah. And let us know how we're doing on any social media platform. Please feel free to reach out and give us, just say hello, anything you want. We're here to listen. Exactly. Thank you so much. And we'll see you on episode 83. Next time. Peace.